Hello everyone and welcome to another mini sky tonight. So I had a viewer ask me about how they can improve their light distribution because they want to make sure they have a nice dark area in their backyard to be able to view the nighttime sky. Because one of the problems that we're facing in the modern era is called light pollution. So let's look at the history of how this problem came to pass as well as what we can do to help slow the progress down of light invading into our territory. So the use of oil lamps has existed for hundreds of years. Back in the ancient Babylonian times throughout the ancient era, using oil lamps to be able to night, light up a room has existed for thousands of years. But it wasn't until about 300 years ago where they took the lamp and they put them on the streets. So you literally had these oil lamps placed on wooden poles so that it would light the way so travelers can know exactly where they're going. And in fact, like one old job that no longer exists is a, called a lamp lighter. Back in ancient Britain era, they, there was a guy that would go from lamp to lamp to light it and snuff it out at the first thing in the morning. So they were your first graveyard shift kind of people. They started their job as soon as the night started and their job ended as the sun started to rise. It wasn't until the 18th century because of problems with potential fires caused by these old oil lamps and things of that nature that they went from oil lamps on wooden poles to oil lamps now on cast iron fixtures, which made it a lot much more structurally sound to be able to light lamps. And in the 19th century, they started using natural gas, kind of like what we use today. But it wasn't until the 20th century with the invention of electricity and the light bulb that we started to get electric lamps and the wide use of them. So this is kind of the progression of how light went from a dim little night light of like a little candle to now or how we have light invading into area, every area. So what is outdoor lighting now? Back then it was just basically an oil lamp on a post. Now we have street lights, we have roadway lights, we have parks, stadium, parking lot lights, we have landscaping lights, we have residential buildings, signs, you name it, we have a ton of different sources of light because of the invention of the modern light bulb. And as technology progressed, so did our advancement in light. And as you can see in this background image, light is starting to invade all these different areas where light normally didn't go over. So it creates some issues. So yes, being able to night light the night, so to say, is good, but for any good thing, there are potential problems. So here is a beautiful map of the world, but at night. It may look pretty, but in actuality, the reason being why you're seeing those lights is because that light has come up to space. So that's energy and electricity being shot up into space and wasted. So you're wasting a valuable resource that could be put towards the ground. Also, you have the problem of glaring lamps that don't necessarily light the area that they're supposed to, and they can either blind the people that are trying to get through, or it lights up areas that it's not supposed to light up. Like in the case right here, these lamps were built on a college campus to help protect students at night, but as you can see, it's lighting up the trees. I don't know about you, but very few times when I go through a park or anything, I'm not looking up at the trees, I'm looking at the sidewalk. So why light up the trees? Also, you have the problem of negative effects on wildlife. Animals that depend upon the natural rhythm of the 24 hour cycle get affected a lot. Like for example, you have a lot of the owls that depend upon their night vision to be able to hunt and with the increasing light they think oh it's daytime and they're less likely to hunt. In fact some scientists have speculated that some breeds of owls have started to get smaller and smaller eyes because they don't need them 
which in a way can be a bad thing if they try to migrate to different areas. Also, you have the problem with like, for example, sea turtles. Many sea turtles lay their eggs on the beach. And when the turtles hatch, they try to go out towards the ocean and they usually depend upon the moon to kind of get the reflection on the sea. But sometimes they can confuse street lights and or like resort lights is the common problem. They confuse them for the natural moonlight. And so they would drift towards those areas rather than towards the ocean and that could cause problems. I know there's a huge, a huge organization down in Florida that basically it's their job to kind of scan certain beaches where they know certain sea turtles lay their eggs and if the, any turtles hatch to help the little turtles head toward the ocean so that way they don't accidentally go into the street. Also, it affects you. Having too much light in your life can be a negative thing, if, especially if light trespasses into your bedroom. If you have a street light right outside your window, it makes it very difficult for the, your natural circadian rhythm to kick in. A lot of people have had problems being able to fall asleep if there's light that's going into their bedroom. One way to mitigate this at, at, that I usually do sometimes is I put a blanket over my window because we have a street light in front of our house and I put a blanket over our window so that way I can get total darkness to be able to sleep. Also, they notice that whether if you're watching a television or you're looking on your cell phone shortly before you go to sleep, it decreases your melatonin and it causes you to want to stay up longer so you're getting less sleep. I know it's a habit. I do it too. I always check the news right before I go to bed or check to make sure no one's uh, messaged me right before I go to bed. And I, it's a bad habit. I know, I get it. We depend upon our cell phones constantly. Also, there's negative impacts on astronomy. If you have too much light that goes up into the sky, you can't see stars. And many of the newer generation of scientists like our younger kids are not getting to be able to see the nighttime sky, which is kind of sad. So what can we do to help mitigate these issues that are slowly starting to creep up because of our need to have light at night? Well, we can be smart about how we use our light. As you can see on the image on the top, an unshielded light just glares out everywhere. Not only does it glare out everywhere, but it can glare out into areas that you don't want it to, especially your neighbors. You really don't want to shine a light into your neighbor's bedroom. It's unneighborly and it's also mean. So, and it's also a waste of your electricity. So as you can see from the image on the top, this is an unshielded light, whereas in the image on the bottom is a shielded light. It's focused down to the area that he wants the light to shine. So consider shielded luminarias or shielded luminaries. So what you do is basically put a shield or some type of fixture on it to focus the light down where you want it and not just blurring out everywhere. And the reason being why this is good is because the area that you want to be lit will then become brighter. And so that means you don't have to get more higher powered light bulbs, as well as it saves on electricity. So as you can see in the images over here to the right, the top one is your shielded ones and all the light is focused down to where it needed to be. Whereas in the image on the bottom is what it would look like unshielded. And as you can see, it basically lights up the building that's nice and all, but nobody wants to see the top of the building. No one wants to see the roof. They want to see where the, the light needs to be. So don't waste energy. Here's a very classic example I was able to find of a poor shielded light. This unshielded light basically is supposed to be shining on an ATM. So that way the security camera can pick up anybody. But notice it's shining on the trees too. No one wants to see the trees. So if they put, were to put a shield on it, the light would be brighter around the ATM and it would, the light would be focused on the area that they want it to be. And it would reduce electricity cost. 
One area I did notice that was very important to have fully shielded light was at an airport. The last thing you want is to have light go blinding into the cockpit as a pilot is trying to land on the runway. So by sh fully shielding the lights, you can point the light down at the tarmac and allow it to be able to light the path for the pilot to go down. So how about you? Where can you find these different lights? Well, when you're looking for different lights, I know a lot of us are trying to do some renovations and everything. Try to look for lights that have a shielded fixture. So you can do ones that are column mounted fittings that can be used for like street lights or parking lights or for pedestrian areas if you're into that sort of thing. Um, if you're doing it for your home, like if you're trying to like light up a particular area like your front door or if you're trying to light up a access point into your backyard, consider a wall mounted lantern to where it's pointed downward at the specific area you want it to be, but not blaring out into a wide area. So it's only focused on one particular area. Also, if you're just like, for example, you're looking to light up your garden or light up a pathway so that way you don't accidentally tumble or fall towards your front door, consider some bollards. They have some mini versions of these ones too, but this is a bigger one that is sometimes used on different college campuses and some types of gardens. These bollards are really good because they shine the a low light down, but it's low enough to where it doesn't blind out, but it's since it's focused at to a point, it lights the area that is only needed. And it lights down on the pathway so that way you can see the pathway, but it doesn't blare into your eyes. And of course, recess fittings. So rather than having like a hanging lantern, consider having a light that's recessed into your house and it's buried in either in the ground or in a fixture high enough to where it doesn't blare out into different areas. So this is, these are two examples of recess lighting done badly and done well. So as you can see on the top, here's some recess lighting of a gas station. Yes, it lights up the gas station very well, but you can see it on the top of the gas station itself. You can see it also across the street. You can even see it on the cars. It's bleeding out into different areas where it shouldn't be. Whereas in the image on the bottom, notice you see a distinct cutoff of where the light hits. So it's not invading into different areas, it's cutting off exactly where it's meant to be. And that means less wasted energy. So here's some other solutions that you could possibly consider. Use timers or dimmers or even motion sensors. I know several people like to have the motion sensor detectors on their front doors and or on their garages. Make sure that they're not the big huge bright bulbs and that they're shielded downward so that way they, it doesn't shine into your neighbor's front porch or into their bedrooms. Also, make sure that if like they have like daytime nighttime sensors, like kind of like a solar cell sort of thing. I, I've seen a few houses that actually do this to where as soon as the lights get dim enough, uh, the light of the sun gets dim enough, the lights start to gradually go up. And then when the lights come, when the sun starts to rise, the lights start to go down. So that can save on some electricity too. Choose bulbs that fit the place. Don't get like the very, very bright ones if you don't need them. And also avoid electronics to go to bed. I know I'm guilty of this. I like to look at my cell phone. Several studies have suggested that roughly uh, 30 to 45 minutes of low light and or no light before you go to bed helps you to be able to sleep faster. So instead of pulling up your cell phone, consider reading a book. So these are some of the ideas of what you can do to give you a better chance to be able to view the nighttime sky when you're doing some house renovations. Consider some better lighting so that way we can reduce the amount of light pollution that heads out towards our territories. If you have any topics or questions you would like me to cover over, leave it down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions of different types of dates or different types of events that you would like for me to cover, leave it down in the comments as well. 
parents, if you're looking for some fun activities for your kids, I recommend futureadysa.org that has these wonderful fun activities for your kids that they can do these educational activities and earn digital badges. And these digital badges basically are kind of like a sort of pride of honor sort of thing from what I could tell from different kids and they want to keep going. I highly recommend the Astronomy Plus mission. That's the one I helped out with. So I'll leave a link in the description below if you'd like to check it out. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, never stop learning.